What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, two-time junior middleweight world champion, who currently is the unified junior middleweight world champion, superstar boxer, Jamel Lyons only Charlo. 34 wins, uh, one loss, one draw. Uh, Jamel Charlo has uh, 18 big wins by way of knockout, 31 years of age, 5 foot 11 with a 73 inch arm reach. He will be taking on uh, undefeated WBO junior middleweight world champion Argentinian star boxer Brian Castano, who has 17 wins, no losses, two draws, 12 wins by way of knockout, 32 years of age, 5 foot 7 and a half with a 67 inch arm reach. With that said, uh, this fight is scheduled to take place. Uh, May 14th uh, in um, Los Angeles, California, okay? Uh, with that said, this is a highly anticipated, undisputed rematch of the first fight that took place back in uh, July of 2021 that saw the fight end in a draw, okay? Uh, so with that said, Jamel Charlo, he did an interview. Uh, obviously, he's going to be, uh, you know, out in the public. He's going to be... Uh, you know, um, doing interviews, he's going to be promoting the fight, uh, he's training, and everybody wants to hear his take on a few things, okay? Uh, a few things, more importantly, is the fact that undefeated, unified WBC, IBF, welterweight world champion, uh, superstar boxer, who is widely considered by many to be top three best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, and Earl the True Spence Jr., who's the fellow stable mate of his, Errol Spence Jr. is 27 wins, no loss and no draw. Errol Spence is 21 wins by way of knockout. He is 32 years of age, five foot nine and a half with a 72 inch arm reach. Errol Spence Jr. is going into a massive unification bout himself uh, April 16th in two weeks against WBA World Boxing Association welterweight world champion Cuban star boxer Yadanis Uyas uh, in Dallas, Texas, Arlington. Uh, it's Texas, uh, AT&T, Dallas Cowboys Stadium. So with that said, uh, they both have the same trainer. They share the same trainer in uh, well-renowned trainer, trainer of the year in Derek James, okay? Uh, so with that said, uh, Jamel Cholo, he touched on a few things in an interview he did. And one and a few things stood out to me is that <clears throat> we know Jamel Cholo is very competitive. We know he's outspoken. And we know he wants to be the best, right? Jamel Charlo has took on the best junior middleweights in the world. He's never turned down any fight, okay? Uh, he's, um, you know, uh, uh, he's pursued the biggest fights and the biggest challenges possible. Uh, and he's just a dog in the ring. And I don't think that he gets enough credit uh, for his, um, his approach to the sport of boxing. I think that because he's outspoken, uh, that get it, it gets overshadowed, right? Uh, most people don't even have him in the top five pound for pound. I do. Um, Jamel Charlo, in this interview particularly he did, he said he wasn't great, okay? Uh, he said that the word great gets uh, thrown around far too much, uh, and he's not great. He said he's not great yet. Also, he stated that... Um, he would never fight, obviously, his identical twin brother and two-division undefeated world champion, who's the WBC reigning middleweight world champion, superstar boxer, Jamal Lyons only, Charlo, who has 32 wins, no loss, no draw, 22 big wins by way of knockout. Obviously, they're the same age at 31. He's six feet tall with a 74-inch arm. He's slightly taller and slightly longer arms than Jamal, okay? Um, but he attests to them sparring, and he explained that they could never spar against each other anymore because the sparring sessions get too heated. Uh, then he attests to ever fighting Errol Spence. Now we know Errol Spence, he recently stated that he would fight Jamel Charlo uh, if they were friends like they say they are, uh, they would break bread together and it's for legacy and the fight should happen when he moves up. Now obviously he stated that, Errol Spence stated that he only has two fights left at uh, welterweight 147, Jamel fights at 154. He stated this upcoming fight with Yadena Sugis, and he wants to fight the biggest fight in the sport of boxing, which is the fight with him and undefeated three-division world champion, former junior welterweight, undisputed world champion, currently the reigning WBO welterweight world champion, who is widely considered by many to be the number one best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, and Terrence Bud Crawford. Terrence Crawford is 38 wins, no loss, no draw, 29 big wins by way of knockout. 
uh, 34 years of age, five for eight with a 74 inch arm reach. With that said, uh, he stated that, you know, um, Errol Spence, that is, that that's the fight he wants after this year, Dana Sugi's fight for Undisputed. Then he's moving up to well, uh, junior middleweight, super welterweight, some some would call it, junior middleweight. Uh, it's a tweener division. It's in between welterweight and it's in between middleweight. Those are two glamour divisions. Uh, the welterweight division is a glamour division and the middleweight division is a glamour division. And the 54 pound division is a tweener, it's in between. Uh, and so Errol Spence stated that he's gonna go up and he wants to obviously collect the belts. Now, obviously, should Jamel Charlo get past Brian Castano, the only way to get the belts is to go through Jamel Charlo. So he stated that uh, that's a fight that he would absolutely make happen. And if they're friends, they would make it happen. Well, Jamel Charlo, uh, he stated he has no interest in fighting Errol Spence. Uh, you know, uh, he said that they had some um, grueling sparring sessions. OK, we had some definitely grueling sparring sessions. Um, we I don't even know how many rounds we actually sparred. Uh, but we have great sparring sessions, grueling sparring sessions, tough sparring sessions, competitive sparring sessions. Um, but that's not a fight I'm looking forward to. OK, uh, that's not something I'm interested in is what Jamel Charlo stated. So he's not really, truly interested, but he's a, a very uh, big competitor. And I'm sure uh, behind closed doors, Errol Spence, Jamel Charlo has a lot of respect for their relationship. OK, not that Errol Spence doesn't have a lot of respect for their relationship. Uh, Jamel Charlo just publicly won't say it. I'm sure behind closed doors, his competitive nature is saying if he wants to, if Errol Spence won the fight, then let's make it happen. OK, I'm sure as a competitor, that's that's his competitive juices are telling him, let's make it happen if you think you could beat me. Right. Um, and then he said that his sparring sessions with his brother, Jamal Charlo, are grueling sparring sessions uh, that get very heated. And that's why they can't spar anymore. They used to spar a lot, he said, but it gets so heated that we can't even spar anymore. Well, obviously, you can tell from the nature of both guys, uh, they're competitive. They have fiery uh, um, uh, uh, personalities. Um, they're both aggressive. You can see from their style of fighting. Uh, and I'm sure they're competitors, right? And sharing everything as identical twin brothers, uh, we saw that they had spats on social media. They argued on social media. But you can tell right just just as our brothers right uh just as competitors when you share you know uh, um uh uh everything in a sense right you know it's one thing to be siblings there's another thing to be identical twin brothers and share everything you know um most most parents dress their uh children coming up in the same clothing when they're identical twins right They'll wear the same sneakers, same clothes. You know, they 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 dress them just alike on a daily basis. It gets to a point where they want their individuality. You understand what I'm saying? And so, in a in a combat sport like boxing, that's a very competitive. In sports overall, you're going to want to separate yourself so you can understand that they get very competitive and very heated their sparring sessions because, well, they want to have their individuality. It's not that they don't uh, appreciate and love one another. It's that at some point in time, you want to have your own identity, right? Uh, and so I'm sure that's where it gets to. I'm sure they have a bond like no other, but I'm sure that they want to have and separate their identities as well, right? Uh, so he addressed that. And then obviously he stated that he'll never fight Jamal Charlo uh, under the lights. Uh, they don't even spar. Uh, so if they're not even going to spar, you can, uh, for sure, there's a lot of people that want to see them face off against one another, see who's the best. I've never thought about that. Uh, I never fancied it. Uh, and I never envisioned it, right? And so because of their, you know, you understand the bond of twins and siblings, right? Uh, not even if they weren't twins. So he attested the Vitaly and Vladimir Klitschko inspired them. Uh, and they would never fight. Uh, and he talked about the... Um, you know, uh, the, the young children, the young kids that are coming up, the granny twins that are coming up, uh, they're identical twin brothers and they're in the sport of boxing. And so, you know, uh, he said he hopes they never fight. And, you know, then Klitschko's brother inspired them. And Klitschko's are not identical twins. So I never fancied that. Obviously, people want to see them go at each other and they want to see them, you know, uh, uh, bicker. And, you know, it's interesting to people for whatever reason, right, to see loved ones uh, uh, bump heads. I'm not one of those people. So I never thought about who, who could beat who, uh, you know, I, I base, you know, who's better out of the two based off of 
their competition and who they're fighting, right? I don't need to see them fight to base, you know, um, who's better between the two. Uh, and so with that said, you know, Jamel Charlo, he stated that obviously he'll never fight him. And it'll be interesting to see Errol Spence and, uh, uh, and Jamel Charlo face off against one another. Uh, is he slightly bigger than Errol Spence? Well, he's two inches taller. Uh, he has two inch arm reach advantage over Errol Spence. And he's naturally a physically bigger guy than Errol Spence. Uh, and so that would be very interesting. It would be interesting to see how uh, Derrick James, who's been with Errol Spence since he was 16, and Errol Spence is now 32. So he's been with Errol Spence for 15, 16 years, okay? Uh, I'm, sh I'm almost certain that uh, Jamel Chalo, who started with a uh, well-renowned Hall of Fame trainer, uh, Ronnie Shields, um, would be the one that would be looking for an, a, a trainer, okay? And it might be Ronnie Shields who uh, uh, trains him and helps him uh, uh, with this fight. You know what I mean? So uh, if they ever do cross cross paths, Jamel and Errol Spence, would be interesting, right? Errol Spence is a southpaw. Uh, their styles are very similar. They both are thudding punches. Uh, they both stand their ground, but they both have versatility and both can box. So it makes for an interesting fight. Now I want to touch on this. He said he's not great. Uh, he's chasing greatness. He said the world gets thrown around too much and he's still chasing greatness. He himself is not great. Um, and I want to say that, you know, um, he's teetering on greatness. Okay. For sure. Jamel Charlo is teetering on, on greatness. Okay. Jamel Charlo, you know, uh, should he become undisputed? He'll be the first undisputed junior middleweight in the history of sport of boxing. Uh, he has simply cleaned out the junior middleweight division. Uh, he was trying to get the fight with Swift Jarrett Hurd, you know, when Hurd was the unified champion, but Hurd lost to Julian J. Rod Williams. That was a massive fight. Uh, then uh, Jamel Charlo ended up losing to Tony Harrison, and uh, he needed the immediate rematch to regain his title, okay? But then he beat Jason Rosario, who beat J. Rod, right? So it was oddly enough, Swift Jarrett Hurd was the biggest name, right? Uh, in a division not named Jamel Charlo himself for Jamel Charlo, right? Uh, and they were setting up this massive unification bout between the, the two of them. And then Hurd lost the homecoming fight in his backyard to J-Rock. Then it seemed like we was going to get J-Rock and uh, Jamel Charlo. But then J-Rock ended up losing his homecoming fight immediately the very following fight to Jason Rosario, right? Uh, so Hurd had a backyard homecoming fight you know, uh, against J-Rock in his hometown of uh, Maryland, he lost. And J-Rock had a hometown fight in Philadelphia. He lost to Rosario. And then Jamel Charlo beat Rosario. So he beat the man who beat the man who beat the man. But oddly enough, Jason Rosario didn't represent the same thing that Hurd represented. He didn't even represent the same thing that J-Rock represented. They were just bigger stars than Jason Rosario. So he just didn't get the credit for those wins. Uh, and then he fought Ryan Castano, for uh, um, you know, uh, undisputed, and the fight ended in a draw. Uh, now he'll beat Brian Castano, I believe, in his rematch. I think that he'll uh, uh, knock out Brian Castano by the sixth, seventh round. I think he'll he learned his lesson from the first fight. I think that in this fight, uh, uh, he'll definitely learn his lesson even more. I think that he'll knock out Brian Castano. Uh, Brian Castano is a much shorter guy, uh, much less physically imposing. And I think that uh, Jamel Charlo is going to win this fight. But he beat Erickson Lubin. Uh, he didn't get the opportunity to fight Hurd. I wish he did. And he, he I believe he would have beaten uh, Swift Jarrett Hurd as well because Hurd just likes defense. Uh, Jamel Charlo puts his punches together beautifully. Combinations, versatility. He's able to box. He's able to move. He's uh, just so, so, so uh, um, uh, technically gifted and athletic, right? Uh, so he didn't get the opportunity, but I definitely believe he's teetering on greatness. And I think that, you know, the Brian Castano fight is going to see him in that direction. Two-time world champion, undisputed in the division before uh, 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 anybody has ever been undisputed at. You just look at the junior middleweight division, right? There's not a four belt holder in the division. So he's going to create history in that manner. Uh, I wish he would have fought Lara and heard that would have solidified his greatness in that division but he beat erickson lubin uh he's beat the fighters that's in front of him uh and he's teetering on the greatness but at least he's raw uncut and keeping in a hundred that he's not great yet so let's see how this unfolds he's definitely not patient uh he's not um um he's not um you know uh uh 
he's he's not settled with where he's at, right? And he wants more and he wants to be great. So it's interesting to see if he's going to move up to 160. You know, uh, should he beat Brian Castano? Is he going to stay around? He picks uh, Lubin, who's going to fight uh, Sebastian Fundora to beat Fundora, as I do uh, this upcoming Saturday. Uh, he said he's going to knock out Fundora. As I said, I believe Lubin's going to knock Fundora out in the seventh round, as he does. You know, um, and we have to see, you know, uh, what's left for uh, Jamel Charlo. But he says he's not great yet, and he's 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 chasing greatness. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like your shady videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.